I want to talk about graphing the sine and cosine functions, but first I need to go over a property that the sine and cosine functions have, and that these three functions have. So I have the question, what do these functions have in common? I have three very differently shaped functions, but they all have something in common. They repeat themselves periodically. This sort of triangular shape repeats itself in the graph of y equals t of x. This alternating interval pattern repeats itself in y equals r of x, and this wave pattern repeats itself in y equals s of x. How would we describe this property mathematically? Well, the property is called periodicity, and these functions are called periodic functions. The definition's a little bit tricky, but let's see if we can walk through it and understand uh, what it means. <clears throat> it says, if there is a number p such that f of x plus p equals f of x for all x in the domain of f, then f is a periodic function. What does this mean, f of x plus p equals f of x? It means that if I find the right value of p, I can always add that value to the x, to the input, and get the same output. Let's take a look at the functions. <clears throat> Suppose I start with an x value of negative 2. What could I add to negative 2 and get exactly the same output that I have here, which is 0? I could add 2. That will give me 0, right? If I add 2 to negative 2, I get x equals 0, which has an output of 0. And if I add 2 to 0, I get 2, and that has an output of 0. If I add 2 again, I get 4. That has an output of 0. So have I found the p-value that I need? The answer is no, because that p-value won't work for all inputs. Let me give you an example. Negative 3. If I add 2 to negative 3, I get negative 1. And the output at negative 1 is negative 1. It's not 1. So I have different outputs. Again, if I start at negative 1 and I add 2, I get to 1. The output at, neg at 1 is positive 1. The output at negative 1 is negative 1. Different outputs. So I have to find another p-value, one that works for all x's. And it turns out that the value is this difference, 4. I can get from one maximum to another by adding 4, right? Negative 3 plus 4 is 1. So 4 is the number that's going to work. And I would say that t of x plus 4 equals t of x. <clears throat> Let's take a look at y equals r of x. Now here, if I start at a nice number like negative 2, and I add 2, I do get to the same output. Here the output's 0, and here the output's 0. And if I add 2 again, the output is still 0. But now I'm a little skeptical. skeptical. I want to try this out for other inputs. So let me try it out for something like negative 1.5. Okay? At negative 1.5, the output is 1. If I add 2 to that, I get 0.5. There the output is 1. And if I add 2 to that, I get 2.5. And there the output is 1. So it looks like I found the right number. 2 actually works for this function. r of x plus 2 equals r of x. And finally, for y equals s of x, <clears throat> I don't want to fall into the same trap I fell into up here. So I don't want to look at points like this. And actually, now that I think about it, when I look at these two consecutive zeros, you know, at negative pi and at 0, the function's actually going down here and going up here. They're really not the same kind of point. But if I look at a maximum value here and here, from here to here, the distance is pi over 2 minus negative 3 pi over 2. That's a distance of 2 pi. So my hypothesis is that the p-value is 2 pi. But let me try that for other values. 
if I start at in between negative 3 pi over 2 and negative pi, just right in between. If I add 2 pi to that, I'll be right in between pi over 2 and pi. Do I get the same value? It looks like I do. So this value looks like it works, 2 pi. S of x plus 2 pi equals S of x. Now, let me briefly return to this function for a second. I want you to observe that sometimes when you find the value of p that works, in this case it was 2, sometimes a larger value will also work. For example, notice that if I start at negative 2, I can add, I can add 4 and get to the same output. And that will also work at other points, like at 1.5. If I add 4 to that, I get 2.5, and both have the same output. It actually does work that r of x plus 4 equals r of x. This still makes it a periodic function. It's just that this number is not the smallest number that works. And that brings us to the idea of the period. The period is the, value, the smallest value of p that works in the definition of periodic function. So here, the period is 4. For r, the period is 2. That's the smallest value that works. And for s, the period is 2 pi. So that means that these functions will repeat themselves every 4 units, this one 2 units, this one 2 pi units. Now there's one more thing I have to talk about with periodic functions, and that's amplitude. <clears throat> amplitude is defined as the maximum value minus the minimum value over 2. Let me show you what that means. <clears throat> so on this function, the maximum value the highest, the, the y value that corresponds to the highest point is 1. The minimum value is negative 1. Maximum minus minimum is 1 minus negative 1, or 2. Divided by 2 is 1. So the amplitude would be 1 minus negative 1 over 2, which is 1. I'll write a for amplitude. The amplitude of this guy is 1. What about this one? The maximum value here is 1, the minimum value is 0. Here, the amplitude would be 1 minus 0 over 2, 1 half. And here, the maximum value is 3, the minimum value is negative 3. 3 minus negative 3 over 2 is 6 over 2, 3. So you may have noticed that all you have to do is find the distance between the maximum and minimum values and divide by 2. That's amplitude. So again, we've got periodic functions. These are functions that repeat themselves every p, period. period the period is the, the length of the interval over which the values repeat themselves. And the amplitude is the maximum minus the minimum value divided by 2.